We're queuing things up today in the green pastures of Kitsilano. With me on camera as always is Rick Von Schmidt. Rick suggested I do a vlog with an outer space theme, and I immediately thought of this place. Vancouver Space Center is a non-profit community resource that brings the wonders of space to Earth while providing a sense of ongoing discovery. They've got innovative programming, exhibits, and activities. And that's going to do it for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Until next time, that's a... Yeah, yeah, what's that, Rick? You think we should do a little bit more? James do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Rick has just reminded me that I recently read James Doohan's phenomenal autobiography titled Beam Me Up Scotty. James, or Jimmy as friends called him, played Scotty in the best TV show of all time, Star Trek. With a wife and three small children, William Patrick Doohan, a pharmacist, decided to move out of Belfast. He wanted to go to South Africa, but his wife, Sarah Montgomery, convinced him to choose Vancouver. Her sister Isabel was here. Shortly after they arrived in Vancouver, Sarah gave birth to their fourth child, little Jimmy Doohan, on March 3rd, 1920. In his book, Jimmy says the family traveled by train from Halifax to Vancouver. That means they would have arrived here at Vancouver's new train station, which had just been opened four months earlier in 1919. But Jimmy doesn't say where they lived. For that information, I turned to my friends at the Vancouver Archives. Tucked away in a little office beside Bart on the beach, you'll find the nicest people in the world here at the Vancouver Archives. My friend Kyra Baker showed me how to access the old city records. I looked up Jimmy's daddy and I found him in the 1920 listings. W.P. Doohan, that's William Patrick, druggist at 2632 Granville Street. And in the 1922 listings, he's there again at the same address. This time it says lab. So this must have been where he worked. Let's go see if the building is still there. While we're heading there, I can tell you that Jimmy had an incredible life. He joined the Canadian military when the country entered into World War II. Jimmy made lieutenant and led a landing craft full of 33 brave Canadians onto the Normandy beaches on D-Day, June 6, 1944. He got all of his men safely into town where a couple of snipers were firing at them. Jimmy picked up a rifle and took them both out. A few hours later, Jimmy was shot several times, but one bullet to his chest was stopped by a cigarette case his brother gave him. Jimmy did lose a finger, but he eventually recovered. He became a pilot, and he loved to fly. His flight stories are incredible, and I highly recommend his book. All right, we're here on Granville, and this is where 2632 would have been. But sadly, it looks like that building is long gone. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. And until next time, that's it. Yeah, but what's that, Rick? Try the archives one more time? All right. Good call, Rick. Under the 1921 listings, William Doohan, 2210 Arbutus. This must have been where the family lived. Let's go see if the house is still there. While we're heading there, I can tell you that Jimmy left the military after six years. One night soon after, he was listening to a radio drama. The acting sounded terrible, and Jimmy figured he could do better. He went to acting school and made friends with other students like Lee Marvin, Jackie Gleason, and his best buddy, Leslie Nielsen. Jimmy's career took off, and he performed in hundreds of stage, radio, and TV productions. Eventually, he moved to Hollywood and auditioned for a science fiction pilot called Star Trek. A master of accents, Jimmy decided to imitate a Scottish man he'd met in Europe during the war. He won the part, and the world was introduced to Montgomery Scott, chief engineer of the Starship Enterprise. Montgomery was Jimmy's mum's maiden name, and Scott, well, seems like it made sense.
All right, we're here at Arbutus and Six, and nice old coffee shop here. Let's check the address. Twenty-two hundred. We're looking for twenty-two ten, so we're very close. Let's head down this way, Rick. Ooh, looks like a little historic plaque there. Looks like uh, this was a grocery store here dating back to 1907, and the house next door is from 1901. The city saved the buildings in the 1960s, and the directory says Jimmy was here in 1921, so it's starting to look promising. Let's see if 2210 is next door. All right, here it is, 2210. I can't say for sure, but there's a very good chance this is where it all started for Chief Engineer Scotty. This might be Scotty's first home. Looks like a family of six could have lived here. It's a pretty big house. Maybe that top window was young Jimmy's bedroom. Or if he built his first transporter in there. In his book, he says the family relocated to Sarnia, Ontario when he was six years old. So he may have spent six years in this house and probably started going to school nearby. I didn't see his daddy listed at any other address in the archives. We do know for sure that he would have been in the shop next door getting groceries with his mom. This historic neighborhood is called Delamont Park, and it's got some of the oldest houses in Vancouver. Several of them have original woodwork, bathtubs, and other elements. This image is thanks to a very smart local historian named Bruce McDonald. He has a great book called Vancouver, A Visual History. I highly recommend it. Here I've circled the house in question beside the Arbutus Grocery. The picture suggests the house was built in 1911. So this supports that the Doohans lived here as early as 1920. Jimmy has high praise for his Star Trek buddies, George Takei, Nichelle Nichols, Walter Koenig, and DeForest Kelly, or D as he calls them. He says Leonard Nimoy was one of the most professional, classiest dudes he ever met. Unfortunately, he says he didn't like fellow Canadian William Shatner. But despite that, Jimmy went on to have a very successful career which included lots more work with his Star Trek castmates. This is the back of the home here. It's a duplex. 2210 Jimmy's section is on the right there. Jimmy married the love of his life, Wendy Braunberger, in 1974. They honeymooned in Vancouver and eventually settled just south of Vancouver in Redmond, Washington, with their children. Sadly, Jimmy passed away July 20th, 2005. He was 85 years old. He was cremated and his remains were sent into outer space. And this is where it all started. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you for your military service and ensuring we enjoy our freedom. Because of your sacrifice, we are able to live long and prosper. And thank you for creating the beloved character, Scotty. From one Canuck to another, we love you. I thought we'd wrap things up today with one more piece of outer space here in Vancouver. Just off Canby Street, this is the Centennial Rocket. It's a tribute to Flash Gordon, who was built for Expo 86, and there's rumored to be a time capsule inside to be opened in 2036. You know I'll be here. Hope you enjoyed this little taste of old Vancouver as she once was. My thanks to Bev Sugarman for makeup and Jewel Hale Mirror for wardrobe. On behalf of Rick and myself, thanks for watching. And until next time, that's a good beat.